So Greg, you're from DC and um, DC could be considered aviation's Silicon Valley. And when we see the headlines like the search for a new FAA administrator and the FAA reauthorization bill, um, you know, it's, it's on the news all the time. It's on Twitter. It's on, you know, it's everywhere. Uh, but what is actually happening? Like, I'm curious to know, what are the D.C. natives talking about? Well, I think in the bigger picture, they're, you know, it's always election year. <laughs> so they're yeah. already starting to talk about the presidential and those kind of things, of course. Um, you know, the, the news of last week about the former president, you know, has got a lot of people talking, of course. So in the bigger picture, those things and and bigger issues like Ukraine and, and so forth. In terms of aviation, well, you mentioned a couple of things that fit into the um, the sort of scorekeeping part. You know, who's who's up, who's down for FAA administrator, and a lot of speculation about that. Um, it, and with FAA reauthorization coming up, everybody is trying to get their issue into that bill. I, I remember when I was working for Senator Biden in 1982, the the reauthorization bill came up. It had already been hashed out in committee in the Commerce Committee. All the fights had been had. It came up on the floor. Most of the time was yielded back, and uh, it passed, either unanimously or by a voice vote. That's just the way it was. When I was at ACI North America, the bill was expiring, I think, in 2007 or eight. We had four and a half years and 23 extensions. And, you know, one year it couldn't get it. It, it was it, it had momentum. And then somebody brought up abortion. Somebody brought up an education issue. And and then that just stopped it right there. Um so everybody's trying to figure out how that's going to play out this year, trying to get their issues into it um, without, you know, muddying the waters too much. I do think right now the um, the big um, one of the big issues is, is the safety issue. A lot of runway incursions um, have happened. Um, you know, pe- people um, at first I thought maybe it was, uh, well, you know, slow, it's slow news right now. Right. So. Um, Maybe each one, and I do think things get reported now that wouldn't have been reported 30 years ago. But you know, some folks I really trust say, "No, no, you know, things are really happening more often." And I remember in the in the um, about 2007 or eight when Marion Blakey was the FAA administrator, she made runway incursions and excursions a big issue. And I remember testifying on that on Capitol Hill. And so I don't know if that's an issue that comes and goes, but there's a lot of focus on that now. Um, because I think, you know, people want to know that they're safe, getting back to your regulation question earlier. So I think that's a that's a big aviation issue right now that policymakers are really focused on. It sounds like with the reauthorization bill, you know, a lot is at stake. You know, when you think about, the again, the new technologies that have marketed themselves to come online soon, all the EV tolls, that, you know, they said they're going to launch in 2025. And you have all the stuff with the staff and then the workforce. So it sounds like, as you're saying, there are a lot of groups that will either on either sides will be pushing for those things or trying to protect the status quo. Yeah, how will those things be regulated? How you how, how do you fold them into the airspace? Um, there's a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm sitting in Dayton, Ohio right now. And um, if I want to fly out of CVG, which I do like to fly out of, um, they do like to fly out of Dayton, too. Um, but it's a long trip, but, you know, an EV toll type situation, you can go over not far from here, maybe and grab one and, and be down there in, in 15 minutes rather than having to go over as president Biden called it, that damn bridge, you know, to get from <laughs> Ohio into Kentucky. So, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a role for all these things and, um, I'm not sure we have the policy framework. So this is one of those years where the reauthorization and what follows are the regulations that follow out of it demand a lot of expertise. And um, I think we have it on hand. And I th- I'm hoping back to your, one of your earlier questions, that those kind of things will inspire younger people to take another look at aviation because this is new, right? A slightly bigger plane or slightly quieter plane doesn't really grab their attention, but this is new stuff. And I'm hoping it'll grab, grab their attention. 